hit record and for me i i know it's my first portrait but i i want the rules but it's look very tight just uh, but uh, that's that's all my can do i, I yeah just, yeah I, how to make a little rules I, I, my one is very like a very try to make it better it's but it's very tight i feel it's very tight yeah but, well um, i mean you don't have to like necessarily I, I would say you don't necessarily have to feel bad about that um because let me um for a moment just no i'm show. not feel bad just i'm a beginner i just want to show me how to make a little more rules but i, I know it's take its time it's you need yeah, time it, to need the practice yeah definitely yeah it definitely um takes definitely takes time to learn how to paint the moment Mm -hmm. instead instead of painting the form if that makes any sense like yeah, like, it's yeah. like connecting too many dots mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. um, so this right here is a an image of uh gustav klimt let me put add to photos and then right here um add to photos so i just want to show you how uh klimt changed through the years it's really yeah. interesting. So when Klimt was a young artist, mm -hmm. um, oh, you know what? Like this image is so small, but uh, you know it's expanding decently. Um, if you were to zoom in to this to this painting, you can mm -hmm. literally see each and every face. You can like practically see eyelashes. Mm -hmm. And he did this when he was younger. Of the I think it's the Opera House in. Um, in uh austria um mm -hmm. so i personally i don't like this painting like I, I i actually really don't like it i i think it's not a nice painting um but it's interesting how klimt started had to start there and then once he learned um mm -hmm. what, once once he just basically learned how to paint how to see light flowing over form then let's take a look at klimt later in his career um this is him later mm -hmm. on, so mm -hmm. painterly, so, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's just so strong. And again, sorry mm -hmm. for the poor image, mm -hmm. um, but that's kind, of the, that's kind of the course that we all mm -hmm. take mm -hmm. in our work, um, mm -hmm. where when we first start out, um, mm -hmm. we, we have to kind of go tight. Mm -hmm. We have to see how light flows over form. Mm -hmm. Then as, as you move further along, you mm -hmm. learn how to paint as I was saying before, the moment mm -hmm. rather. And it's, it's almost as if, uh, and I'm going to do a quick little example right here on the side and just bear with me for a moment. Okay. So mm -hmm. like right over here. So there's two ways of painting a cup, let's say, and let's go, let's go, we're going to create a new layer. So there's two ways of painting a cup. So you can, mm -hmm. You can draw the outline of the cup. Mm -hmm. You can draw the saucer it's sitting on, put a handle on it like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And then you can draw in the shadow shape. Mm -hmm. And let's say the cast shadow coming off of it. There's mm -hmm. gonna be a little bit of cast shadow. And then you fill it in like that. Mm -hmm. And the light comes off the saucer. Um, okay, so that is, let's, let's call that, um, in this, this instance, we'll just reduce it to linear. And then now here's another way of drawing a cup. And the other way is observing like moments. And when you observe moments, you kind of put pieces of information down mm -hmm. and then you let the viewer's eye put it together. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So carving out a little bit with the background. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then okay. over here, it's going to be really rich and dark mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. And let's say that that is in silhouette. And so we'll start to piece it together. So you see how I'm approaching mm -hmm. this through two different gates. Okay. I've got your point. Okay. Okay. Go to the negative, right? 
Yeah, like carving, car, carving on the negative side. So make yeah, it, carving make on the negative the side. Uh -huh. Yep. And then also allowing the viewer's eye to put things together. Now you don't have uh -huh. to leave it. You don't have to leave it that soft. Uh -huh. um, but, because you can go in and you, you can sharpen certain things, but mm -hmm. it's this whole idea of suggesting the form rather than stating the form. Like, okay. Okay. Um, and there's a quote by uh, an author and I, I looked for it a few times recently and I can't find it, but I read it once. I think it was by Hemingway, but it might've been John Steinbeck. And they said, um, say something without saying it. Okay. And that was kind of their mantra in, in writing where, if you use economy and you suggest it, then the viewer's eye will put it together. So look at how much more, like that's actually how our eye sees more so than, than, than the upper one. Like the mm -hmm. upper one, mm -hmm. it, we, we actually really don't see the world that way. Um, mm -hmm. We see the world more this way. Okay. So um, mm -hmm. what, I'll, what I'll call the lower one is, um, I'll erase the title right here. Let me put it in red so it's consistent. So I'll say linear and then mass. Um, okay. okay. And then we put in mass moments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that's really how we want to approach um, the model. The other thing that um, I would say is it's very, very hard to paint. Um, loose from a photograph. Um, it's not impossible. Okay. It's okay. Definitely, definitely not impossible because uh -huh. you know, there are great painters out there and they get very expressive works from folk and they look at a photograph. But when we have a photograph and we don't actually have the model in front of us, we mm -hmm. really we tighten up. Mm -hmm. because we want to get like absolute fidelity and we want to, mm -hmm. it, it's a game of verisimilitude. But okay. when the model's in front of us, we don't have that luxury. Like we actually can't get too specific because like, think about it, the model's kind of moving around. Um, so when you paint in a studio with a live model on the other side of all of this pandemic stuff, um, when you're in a studio and mm -hmm. you're going to find, you're going to be, you're going to be painting actually differently. You're going to be seeing more of the moment because um, if I opened up any one of your still lives, in your still lives, you really paint the moment, but in this one, you're painting very linear. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, all right. So let's jump over to a few different things. Um, okay. the, the, one of the first things I'm going to do is I know that the hair over here is dark. Mm -hmm. Um, let me uh, merge these two together. I know the hair is dark and that the, the light just captured a sheen. And so, mm -hmm. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get, okay, so let's go a little bit. Maybe that's too dark. Um, oh, that's what it is, airbrush. Perfect. Okay, so I'm just gonna make this a little bit darker. Um, okay, so the next thing um, that I would say is that I feel like the neck still feels a little bit thick. Like you take your hand and um, cover up the neck and look at how the face um, really is, is working. So I'm just going to do something absurd quickly. Um, look at how the face really is working. Um, but then when we look at the neck, the neck feels a little bit too big. Um, and what I would say in regards to that is I see um, if you drop a line down on her face from the mm -hmm. corner of her nose, it hits her mm -hmm. Adam's apple. Mm -hmm. um, but when I do that on yours, um, she still has this much room where we can see her neck. Mm -hmm. And so obviously in, in the shadow over there, mm -hmm. what we can see is that the form is turning soft and we know there's a little bit more to the cylinder, but like, why not like lose that into shadow? You know what I mean? Okay. So like, let's okay. Okay. let's actually blend this. And so you see how it, it just turns and it's lost into shadow. Okay. Um, and then uh, the side of her face, um, mm -hmm. it's your it's your choice. I 
I don't like advocating do this, do that kind of teaching, but I would play around with what if we lose and push those shadows on the side of her face? Cause the photograph has shadows that are much darker. Mm -hmm. Let's just play with that. Like, again, like, um, I contradict myself even while I teach, but the reason why I contradict myself is I'm always looking for new, um, opportunities. So I'm darkening the shadow mm -hmm. and I do like that. I, I actually think it's doing a nice thing as I darken the shadow on the whole right side of, of the face. And I'm talking about obviously our right side. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do like that a little bit more. Um, my computer hasn't, you know, prevents me from doing such a great job of, you know, making it like a good statement, but like, I do like that more. Um, so then another thing that I think you could do <clears throat> is that the hair, mm -hmm. I might even soften down those transitions even a little bit more yet. In the front? On the top? Yeah. So, uh, I'm right now I'm right. I'm right over here. Okay. So watch, whoops. So watch as I, cause the, the sharp line of the hair, it's not that mm -hmm. sharp, but the line of the hair is mm -hmm. somewhat overpowering the eyes. And we want to let the, sh the sharpest sharps be only in one area. So already, I think the image became a little bit more painterly, a little bit okay. less okay. Um, hard. Okay. Um, okay. okay, so then um, jumping over um, the, the... Those highlights should be cool color or warm color? In On the flesh tones? Yeah, no, the highlights on the hair should oh, be a little the... more cool or um, uh, should be a little, a little warm. Um, as I'm looking at the picture on my iPad, the, the highlight in the hair definitely looks warmer. Um, the highlight in the hair is such a tricky one because you put in white paint and it, mm -hmm. looks, it looks gray. Um, so I usually, I don't really put much white paint in when a model has very dark hair. Uh -huh. um, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll put in like uh, a little bit of cobalt blue, um, a little bit of ochre, um, okay. and touch it, just touch it with white, but anything white is especially, are you working with titanium? Oh, yeah. E uh, yeah. Yeah. Titanium no, is no, uh, no. super, too, too super chalky. Too, too and yeah. so, uh, lead Cobo white is less. Okay. Okay. Cobo world, uh, okay. Okay. A little warm color because the light, it's, it's, it's a light from the lamp is a light, a warm, warm light. Yeah. And, and don't just listen to me like in that regard, like, um, sometimes you can look up like a good painter, um, see what they do. Like, um, Jeremy Lipking is, is just like one of my heroes. And Jeremy Lipking, as an artist, he just gets these color combinations that they just always, they always surprise me. Um, and let me just, uh, one second. I want to send an image over that you can see for what he does with hair. And I'm not saying that you necessarily want to um, paint like this image that I'm sending over to you. You know, I'll just, I'm just going to send the whole page. But check out what he does with hair color. Um, it's really, it's really interesting how much he varies his hair color. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, he does a lot with um, burnt sienna with ultramarine blue. And like, here's another example. And the the color of the hair like when you look at the top sometimes there's lavender in it and i mean it's just full-on lavender and mm -hmm. then other times this is more of a silhouette the hair mm -hmm. um but then this isn't a painting left in an early stage look at all the color that he put okay. in the hair so just like you just go really like painting by painting mm -hmm. um and just okay. like he's someone in terms of color who i just deeply admire and it, he just does things i saw him paint in new york city and uh that might be another good example for the highlight of the hair um see what i mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so i saw him paint in new york city and i was just amazed by what he what he did 
and um, how he makes color. It was just really okay. cool. Um, okay, so jumping over, uh, I think there's, there's kind of a, a half tone here on her face. It's a little bit darker on her face. And mm -hmm. over here, I think it just got this, the flesh tone got a little bit to the same. Um, and I think maybe it could go a little bit more like uh, the, the color of the forehead feels like mm -hmm. it has more, more pinks in it. And then this kind of uh, got like almost like acidic. Um, so I think that color, it's, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll draw a line around the whole color. Um, it's right, this color, it's almost like one unified color. Okay. Um, but I okay. like, I like the color up here so much more. And it's all, do you see how it's almost like two different colors? Okay. Um, there's more pink up here. And this looks like it has more orange in it. And so what I would do mm -hmm. is I'd, I'd bring the color of the flesh tone up here into here more. Um, it's also a little too acidic right here. And again, just going in, but you did it really successfully right here, right here. This is all really successful all through there. So I would, um, I would just address those areas. And then as you, as you do that, I'm just going to draw from right here. Um, I kind of go a little bit darker at the turn of the jaw. Okay. Because what we're doing is we're definitely looking, we're looking at a, a cube that is going away from us. So that, that is what her face is at this angle. So that the face, um, I'm not really accounting for the full depth of it, but I'm just saying it's a face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's the nose right there and it's going away from us. Um, so if light is coming right here, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have my brightest bright on the plane break. That's your plane break right there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm being very general because you could get uh -huh. super specific with this for like you know 20 minutes. Um, but very generally, that's your plane break. And if it's the case that that's your plane break, um, then uh, it's obviously it's gonna be a little bit light right here, right? A little bit right here but then as mm -hmm. it turns mm -hmm. as it turns we we want it to get a little bit darker okay so as it yeah. as it goes mm -hmm. as it goes away we actually mm -hmm. want to go a little bit darker and, and again mm -hmm. please pardon the gross exaggeration because i am i'm exaggerating greatly um and really what what i'm i'm trying to say is that there's going to be a gentle um half tone running right here on the side of her face. And that kind of pushes the jaw back a little bit. Okay, oh, okay, oh, okay. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it also okay. turns, the bottom of her jaw turns gradually. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I just made that too dark. It almost looks like a uh, facial okay. hair. Okay. So okay. Um, it's, you just gotta find that right balance. Mm -hmm. But I'd, okay. soften, I'd also soften the turn of her jaw because mm -hmm. the her jaw turns so gradually uh -huh. and um, I mean, it has a clear defined shape. So I'm not saying it, tur it turns like, like, a, like a child's jaw, but like that's a very clean, crisp line right there. However, there's already a half tone running right here on her face. Uh -huh. That's uh -huh. telling uh -huh. us that there's all right here. Um, it's telling us that the cylinder, let's pretend, her jawbone mm -hmm. is actually a cylinder. Okay. And okay. It's telling us that uh, it wants to already start turning all okay. already okay. by like right here. You know what I okay. mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. And then yeah. obviously, and then this is the bottom of the jaw. The bottom okay. Of the sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So I know this, but I don't. I, okay. I, I know this, but I don't. I don't know how. Okay. I got it. Got it. Got it. Um, and then as I, as I look, I, you painted her eyes being a little bit lighter, uh, where the, the cornea and the iris meet in the pupil. Um, mm -hmm. So right here, um, mm -hmm. you painted it a little bit lighter. I like, I like what you've done right here better than mm -hmm. the photo. Um, the photo doesn't have that much information, mm -hmm. but I like, I like what you've done better. So... Um, the question is, you know, is it faithful to the model? Um, I, I don't know because you know, 
you know your daughter better than I do. And I like that a lot. So I really like what you did with the eyes. I think it's very yeah. successful. Um, as for the shape of the nose, um, I might have something for you and it might be a frustration. And I'm sorry mm. um, if you watched me paint yesterday, you know that um, I reroute parts of my paintings. Mm -hmm. But I, I kind of feel like the nostril is too high. And I wonder if that nostril can come a little bit lower. This nostril right here. Okay. Um, so it just feels, it just feels a little bit too high. Okay. And I, it's making zoom out for a minute and you see how her nose seems longer. Okay. And okay. your painting seems mm -hmm. shorter, but mm -hmm. the placement of the lips seems perfect, like perfect, perfect. And it just makes me think that the nose feels like okay her, yeah yeah her, okay okay her proportions mm -hmm. her proportions of her face this to this is really beautiful and it's perfect the length of her nose in real life is perfect for her face but i felt when i looked at the file that the length mm -hmm. of her nose mm -hmm. felt a little too short for her face so okay. is it possible to just bump it down but do not move the lips the lips okay. are lips are perfect so it sounds like a ton of work but to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest, it's not um, because you really just what you're doing is you're moving the base. Um, I'm not able to get the right value. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna pick up oh, my iPad to get in here better. Um, you're moving the base of the nose, and that's that's not open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. um, and it just comes a little bit down, and you could say like well, why didn't you catch that the other week? Um, that's the story of painting for me, Kevin, where I wish I could catch certain things earlier and I don't. And <laughs> hopefully we all improve with that in life. Um, but yeah, sometimes I just later on catch things um, and I can't figure it out about myself. So uh, I'm not telling you exactly how far to move it down because okay. I'm not painting. But then when you do that before, um, you had this little pinpoint um, highlight on the nodes. Mm -hmm. but I see that highlight as, as running left to right. Let me get some light right here. It goes left to right like that. So it runs across the barrel. Again, we're talking about a, a cylinder here where you could view the side of the nose as almost being a cylinder and lights hitting that cylinder mm -hmm. and highlights going to go left to right. And so mm -hmm. that's exactly what I'm seeing right here on the nose. Um, right here is that the, the highlight goes left to right. And okay. then you can use whoops, a little bit of that light to carve out the far side. Come on in. To, yeah. Uh, I'm on to carve out the side of the nose. Um, I'm looking at what I'm doing right now and I know that it's not, that's that I, I haven't done it correctly. Um, I could spend a long time trying to render this correctly. So you had a nice template, but I don't even think that's useful for a student because then it would be me doing the painting. Um, I prefer to give you the idea okay. and then let you run with it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, so, Again, the nose that I just drew in there looks looks wrong to me, but I do think it's heading in a better direction. Um, and then the highlight running down the cheek, mm -hmm. I think come even a little bit further. And to get that highlight, um, what I do, you know what I, I might do, Cindy? I might mm -hmm. actually, so I'm bringing more light on the cheek. I might go get a brush and then mm -hmm. switch back switch back to the screen so I can show you what I do to get highlights on, on things sometimes. So, uh, and let me switch you back to uh, video. And I'll be right back in one second. Go grab sure. a bra. Okay.
Uh, okay. okay, so I got it. So sometimes when I want to do like a highlight on the side, like let's say there's a lot of light on me right here. Mm -hmm. What I'll do is I scoop up the paint, if this mm -hmm. is the palette, and I scoop up the paint um, sideways and I get the paint on the side of the brush, not on the mm -hmm. tip, but on the side. Mm -hmm. And then when I put the paint on the canvas, I drag the brush. So I literally, I literally have it so that the brush, uh, let me get the best angle here, so the brush is going with the canvas. And that can really help you get a highlight. So you scoop up and you drag this way mm -hmm. as you're going like this and trying to paint in a highlight. Okay. So it's, it's a little bit of a, difficult thing to convey over zoom because if we we're in the same studio i could show you but again scooping up that paint and then just mm -hmm. going so uh let's jump back to this screen um and you can do that with either a bristle or the sable so let's go back to screen and um yeah, so actually I just in opening up the file, the nose, the height does, the length does seem a little bit better. Um, and then, yeah, that highlight running down the face, it will really connect the upper and lower part of the, of the face so much better. Do you see what I'm saying? How that highlight on the cheek mm -hmm. comes just a little bit further down like that. Um, so then the other thing I was going to say is I think the shoulder turns a little bit uh, quick. I think you could almost do a Raphael here. Raphael would sometimes round out shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that you have to do this to all models. I'm actually just talking about the design of this canvas. Mm -hmm. uh, th this shoulder over here seems perfect. And it turns kind of, it turns a beautiful angle. It's just perfect. But this one over here before just felt like it turned a little too angular. Um, and you could say, well, it is kind of angular here. Um, I still would err on the side of rounding that a little bit. And I might even grab some of the shadow from up there and go even a little bit darker yet. Kind of adds like a nice drama to the piece as well. Okay. Um, the shape of the hair. Uh, mm -hmm. For me right now, the shape of the hair, that shape of mm -hmm. the hair right mm -hmm. there just feels kind of like boxy, mm -hmm. um, whereas this shape feels really beautiful. That, that I really like. Um, the shape you have right here, I really like. That's really pretty. Um, but then this shape uh, just feels heavy. Mm -hmm. So what I would probably do is design it to have a little bit more flow. Like, see the, the S, that okay. the S curve. And then, you know, you, you can let some strands break free. Um, so I'll illustrate that actually by carving it out and showing you. Okay. And you, know, you can go back a little bit on that black paint if you want with uh, steel wool or something like that. But I'll just show you how carve in right here. And then carve in like roughly right here. And you see how it's already getting like kind of a better flow. Okay. And it just goes like that. And I'm not even being contrived. Like her hair could do this um, naturally. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, it could be absurd how far like hair is, which isn't a bad thing. Absurd can be cool. Um, but I like that so much more. And then this part still feels a little bit over here, still feels a little bit too hard. And so mm -hmm. come in and get your sable brush out. You don't even need to tell the viewer where things are beginning and ending, but that can just, that can just melt right over there where you just let the whole entire passage just really softly, like you don't even need to tell people what's happening there. It can okay. just melt into the shadow. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and you're going to okay. find as you as you let passages go. So on the face, we put more shadow. Again, don't if you put down that shadow and it feels heavy, um, don't do it. <laughs> like you could say, Kevin told me to darken the shadow, but it's ruining the painting. Don't do it. Okay. But if you try it out and it enriches the form, I think it's going to actually soften the piece. Mm -hmm. um, then I would also do that over here. Do you notice how the the image in the past like 20 minutes has actually gotten softer? Okay. Um, it feels like a little bit more gentle. Okay. Um, let's uh, then double back to the lip. So um, she has, I'm just grabbing any highlight color. Uh, she has a really bright highlight on her lip right over here. Mm. Yeah, I don't know how to do it. Just for the lower one, oh, it's just a little highlight on the lower one. Okay. Yeah. And, I try and many again. times. I'm I wrapped up, erase it. I do it again. I don't know what's really thing landing yeah, yeah. on. Um, I to get that to get that pink. Um, do you own a tube of uh, Chinese vermilion? Yeah, I do have. Um, I the the Chinese vermilion mixed mm -hmm. with white and you could touch it with king's blue or, or cobalt blue but king's blue okay. um okay. and that's that's a really cold pink highlight that i really like uh okay. that i see oftentimes in people that have like very red lips have pink highlights like that like some people okay you know, some people have like lip colors change so much right like like my son liam has just such blood red lips mm -hmm. and then I know other people and their lips like always look a little blue <laughs> mm -hmm. like person by person changes. But um, anyway, that little highlight um, on the lip whoops, pencil, will um, really help. It's just that little ping of a highlight. Um, and then I think the shape of the bottom of her lip, um, mm -hmm. as I look at the shape of the bottom, her lip kind of comes like, has like this straight run across the bottom of it it's kind of hard to to see and what that does um let me try to so i'm working right over here so that you know where i'm working um i like i like how her lip drops down and you at the moment it almost feels as if it's like it's kind of like uh coming up right here but i kind of mm -hmm. see it down right there and these aren't these aren't major changes but watch as I go in and I just try to go down and around you see what I mean okay. um, the, again it's imperfect on the computer it's not exactly as I would like to do with a paintbrush in my hand but that brings what that brings is more volume to the lips and then she has this highlight that runs across right here the bottom lip mm -hmm. and I, actually I, I like that a lot that's that's like a really like uh i don't know it just like brings out the shape so i'm gonna go like that and you see how much more pronounced her lower lip became okay Okay. And it's also going to bring the shape of the lip a little bit lower. Um, so when I step back, um, that accents her lips. And then I like I like how rich and deep and dark the lips are. Um, and you've gotten that well. Uh, you, you've done a great job of that. And I just wonder how far it could be pushed. Um, maybe it can't be pushed any further, but maybe it can. So just getting the the shadow, the break off right there um again you can't go too far with it otherwise it just looks bizarre and so the other thought is as i stand as i look um the shadow shape um at the let me grab some shadow color over here the if the light is coming from mm -hmm. the the upper left mm -hmm. um and then this is the we're gonna say that 
her rib cage is a box mm -hmm, right mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously you could think of the rib cage as a box and alternately you could think of it as a sphere. I'm just calling it a box for the sake of my illustration. So the brightest light will hit like right here if the light's coming from there. And mm -hmm. then this will, this will be in shadow over here. Mm -hmm. um, so why am I saying that? So let's, you see how the light on the front of the chest right mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. is pretty close to the, this value right here. These mm -hmm. are all very similar values. Mm -hmm. I, I actually see, I actually see the values as being like, uh, whoops. I actually see the whole front of the chest as being a little bit darker. So that, that was more too, darker. Yep. More dark. Make a more dark. Okay. Um. Yeah. And, and right there. And then what that does, and even like the far side of the uh, shoulder there, I want a little bit darker. Okay. Um, and even like this, this right here is a cylinder. Uh -huh. If that's a cylinder, then what it needs, what it needs is um, variation. Right now from here to here, uh -huh. Uh -huh. there's, it's all the same, same. color, all okay. the same value. Okay. But we know that if it's a cylinder and light is coming and striking at this angle, it's going to be lightest okay. over here. Okay. And then okay. As it goes over here, it's going to get darker. Okay. Okay. So now let's let's take a look at how that can because her neck right now is feeling um, flat, but the sh the external contour feels good. Okay. So I just made it a little okay. bit darker. Mm -hmm. And okay, okay, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Sterno Clido is okay. And look at how round her neck became. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay, and yeah. I'm going a little yep. bit darker over here as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And all of a okay. sudden, her neck went from feeling so yeah, that's flat right. to mm -hmm, I, I went mm -hmm. I went I went too dark. <laughs> so let's go a little bit less dark. Yep. Yeah. That's better. okay. Make a certain okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. So yep. now um, it turns, and that's where mm -hmm. that's where um, as let's go. Let me go to geometric essence. Um, whoops. Let me go over here. Geometric essence studies. Um, that's what we're looking for. And I'm going. ABC is seven, seven What's that? ABCD A, B, C, D, seven, seven, seven line. I don't know. Yeah, you gave to me. Yeah, I always yep. remember one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yep. Okay. And so, if to, we'll, we'll we'll pop this over on the other side, and we will pop it into your um, what is online classes on teaching. Um, so now let's paste. Um, and I want to make this canvas bigger. Okay, so how it applies to the neck before, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the wrong thing, and I'm gonna wreck this sphere. So watch, I'm gonna go in, and I'm going to make it all just look at how much this is flattened because there's no transition. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what the neck was before. That's why we need all those transitions where um, let's, let's actually label your uh, neck with these mm -hmm. transitions. So it needs to have, it needs to have um, a, whoops, I forgot I'm on the wrong layer. Mm -hmm. um, so it needs a, to have that right here. A, the background where the hair is. Mm -hmm. So A. Contour line. Contour line. B. Yep. A. So then this is B. Mm -hmm. Then that half tone, mm -hmm. that half tone right there is one of the most overlooked. C, the half tone, is one of the most mm -hmm. overlooked areas in all of painting. And I know that because I myself didn't see it for years. Now it needs D. It needs a little bit of a highlight. 
but the highlight mm. on the neck probably shouldn't be as bright as the highlight on the face because okay. it's the neck the look at the light on her face it's so much okay. brighter than her neck okay all right um, okay okay so then e would be another half tone okay. and then f shadow. would be full shadow g mm -hmm. is reflected light you don't light you don't need reflected light if there is none uh let it go and i don't see any so don't don't, don't do a reflection like on the neck right they, uh, yeah. i put a little on the face but uh, no nothing on yeah. the nothing on the nothing the on neck. the on the neck um, okay. unless you look at it and you say hey it needs it but i kind of always wait and see how that goes um so h and i we, we don't really need to address so much right now okay. um so anyway so i'm gonna remove all those so we can actually see it and then again as you're doing this think to yourself about the muscles so obviously the sternocleidomastoideus Mm -hmm. And then right here, there's a variety of neck muscles, but we're going to reduce it to the trapezius right okay. here. And there's a bunch of other muscles coming in. Mm -hmm. But um, then we have our larynx, right? So okay. the reason why I'm saying all this is because um, if the rope of the sternocleidomastoideus is running this way, um, you, can, you can gently allude to that in the highlight that you put in. Like okay. you, can, you can hint a little bit at, at that but if you state it too much it's gonna look weird like a rope you can hint okay. um so i'm okay. on your painting and then i'm hinting and then i'm just putting a little bit of light on the trapezius right there okay. and that makes the acromion process go back so far and really all of this what is is good for the painting is that it brings light onto the upper chest and the upper chest in this piece is very, you know, this is right here, like a beautiful passage, same as right here. And those are the pectoral muscles that are, um, they just need a little bit of light right there. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. tiny bit right there. But okay. I, I just overstated those for, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. clarity's sake. Um, don't go as bright as I just suggested, but a little, a little bit again, a little mm -hmm. bit of light right mm -hmm. here right here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and then the whole entire the whole arm um what i would probably do is mm -hmm. i would probably try to find a value mm -hmm. in, in terms of just black and white like whatever background you go with i would probably find a value that would be almost the same as the arm um and so i'm gonna like see if i can find it over here the reason why I say this is because the the arm feels like too the contrast is too high, and so it's it's popping out too much. Whereas if you lower the contrast, then the arm is less apparent. Do, do you see okay. what I mean? That? Oh, okay, it's too too the very is too high, too 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 bright, right? It should be yeah. down a little bit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the contrast is just was just too high before. Okay. Um, you, you'll you'll know it when you see it, but I, I'm doing it wrong. I can I can definitely say that. Okay, okay, but, yeah, okay. But like you can also another thing you can do is, um, as I'm darkening the whole arm, I just darkened it just a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm, you don't mm -hmm, really want mm -hmm. the brightest, like the brightest bright. Um, you know, it it could be a little bit bright. Um, right mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. But. You don't want it's what you really don't want is you don't want this to compete with this. Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm giving you a general thing, but then there are times yeah. to break. Yeah. Okay. You're right. Break. You're right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, then I grab paint from here, mm -hmm. and now, now I would really, really butter on paint right here. I mean, I would, I would get so thick, kind of like your painting of the musical instruments so thick right here where um on the sleeve so uh, i try take it out try i try out and i take it out try to take it out i don't know how to do it I try, uh, yeah it's so okay hard. Wait, yeah. Wait, 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 it should be on the chest right or yeah, on the, so on the... exactly that's where i was going to go so i hit the sleeve first and mm -hmm. i'm brighter on the sleeve mm -hmm. um and then now watch here on the chest yeah so it just needs to, I, I think you can literally just go in and look at how much that enhances the painting. 
Um, yeah. Okay. And I, I, I would probably would go um, a little bit. I probably would go a little bit darker. Could you show me the ships first? Uh, I tried many times. It's not really success. <laughs> To show you what the ships, how how to make it two breasts, the ships, the shadow, and the light with the beneath uh, beneath the breasts. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, line. sure. Um, so the the shadow right here um, on the arm, uh, it cuts. I think you could have it cut in, and so I'm right here. Um, I think you could have it cut in to show okay. the rib cage a little bit more. But you can look at the photograph and say, well, that's not what's happening. I, I rarely do what happens in a photograph when it comes to clothing. Already, the whole entire piece looks so much better. Um, because we, we can feel, like in the photograph, photographs just play by different rules. They don't have to play by the rules that painters have to play by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we, don't, we don't care about the rib cage necessarily in that photograph. Mm -hmm. But here, uh, the rib cage, if, if the cloth comes out that far, mm -hmm. then what happens is the piece just starts to look bloated. Like, look at that. It looks, and that's kind of what's happening in the photo, kind of, a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. um, but when you bring that in, just like that, mm -hmm. it looked so much mm -hmm. better. And then I literally would just get, um, you know, I would, I would go in and I just put in like these, these wrinkles running over the chest. So any any time that I can use a form to heighten the geometric essence, I will. So I'm using these these wrinkles right here. Mm -hmm. I'm using them to heighten the sphere of the breast without overstating it. Same thing on the arm right here. You can use it <clears throat> to kind of like heighten the turn of the sleeve. You see what I'm saying? Can you show me a little bit? I've tried many times, not successful. It's, I just I wiped those. Yeah, I, I'm as best I can. I'll, I'll do it here in the painting program, and I'm just bringing the line over, over the form, like that. And you know, you can continue it down. She has a button on the front of the, the shirt. But in the when model, it, when it in, goes in, over in the middle the form, of the button line, how do you how to, how do you make the the middle line, the button line? It's, which ones curve in and which ones curve out? Um, you're talking about right here. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Um, I probably would go kind of straight because that's between the breasts right there. Uh -huh. Um, so I'd let that go somewhat straight, but then this one right here would be following the form of of the breast as we know it, not as we see it. Mm -hmm. And then it would turn straight at the front of the rib cage. Okay, could, um, you, could you mark the shadow line, the, the two breasts underneath the shadow? Um, well, I'm kind of, in the, it, to the best of my ability, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to like mark out exactly how I would explore it. Like, I don't even want to say do it because it would, <laughs> like I, I go back and forth so much but I'm even oh, okay. deepening, I'm deepening the shadow behind her arm right now so that there's, we understand the reason why um, strengthening these shadows. And then beneath the breasts, you can even go a little bit darker, just like that. Okay. Um, that may not be a good idea. I'll, I'll look at it in a moment. And I went a little too dark. So I'm going to go even just a little bit lighter. And I kind of think that's enough just right there. You don't want to overstate it. You don't want to understate it. You want to just hit it just right. So, um, and then the game that I would play, I probably wouldn't put any right there. I just have a little bit. Then the game that I would play is going up and you, you're you already up here getting in these wrinkles. That's what I would do. I'd, I'd be up there getting the wrinkles in the, mm -hmm. the tiny tiny area because that mm -hmm. then it it makes sense why why they are in the band in the clothing below it you know what i mean uh -huh. i have a one one painting in rembrandt he did the same thing so i'm just copy a little bit but it's not that i have a rembrandt do the same thing for his, his portrait like the same really? same similar uh-huh 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah, if, if you have that file, show it to me next time. I'd like to see it. Okay, uh, I, I'll give you later. Cool. Um, all right, so then you could, as it goes, as it turns further towards shadow, I would just let the thing melt. And so watch how I'm going to send the whole far sleeve totally away. Just let that far sleeve become so, so unimportant. And see how much darker I made it? Mm -hmm. I, like I just let the whole thing completely disappear um, where it's altogether gone. Um, now you could see like, you know, maybe there's an idea. The background is feeling a little bit academic and too, maybe a little bit too uniform. Now look at the gradient that I set up here where you go light, maybe you should go light on the bottom. Um, I play around with stuff like this all the time and I look at it. I'm like, wow, that was the stupidest idea, Kevin. And then I look at it. Sometimes I'm like, wow, that saved the painting that made the painting. Mm -hmm. So going like this, I kind of like that. You make a lighter use of the scope or use of paint? What's that? And then you use the, what the SOS, you the, 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 the brush or you use the paint to make it lighter? Um, I would, I'd go in with, with paint and um, just paint right into it with medium. Okay. I, I, I'd have a, a fair amount of medium on the brush, but I, again, like you could do this and you could step back and be like, nah, that wrecks it. And guess what? You could fix it in like two to three minutes. It doesn't matter, but I would give it a try. And when you do that, go in with a sable brush. Don't put it in with a, um, don't put it in with a bristle brush, but get a fair amount of medium and just have like, you, like you know what I mean like by like the gradient where like let's say the gradient on the top mm -hmm. the gradient on the top might start really really dark and dramatic and so super dark and dramatic up here and then as it goes lower it gets lighter um that might just look cool like who knows okay, if it went okay. yeah dark dark. my went too solid right just yeah, too, a little too, too little solid, solid, too solid, yeah. too, too make, make, make a little modern, make a little. Yeah, okay. like, like that gradient just kind of breaks it up a little bit. And um, as I look at it, I would never, ever, ever go gray. Like, don't go black and, and white. I just want to okay. show you a value. Like, if I, if I had a leaning towards anything, I'd almost mm -hmm. like say like, like a sienna, like some kind of like a, a nice like brown. And I try to find like a nice, I'm, I'm actually looking on her flesh tones. Okay. So something like like a brown like that, that might work. If it's too close to her flesh tone, um, then you could experiment with green. Okay, um, I like uh, the left corner, it's the uh, left corner, it's really good to make a melting, it's to make it disappear, it's a soft. Yeah. That's good. Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. um, so that's what I see and um, I, I like the way that softened up the painting. It doesn't okay, feel sure. so. It doesn't mm -hmm, feel so mm -hmm. sharp anymore. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm, um, okay. All right. Cool. So let's uh jump over to the okay. other piece. Um, so I I think I think with this piece, the the moments that are the things that are so successful are the most important things. Your your line that you have is is so cool. Um, so like you have this line that goes right here and then it's playful and it comes in. Um, then it like goes back like uh, this moment right here is just awesome. I like the curve of the table. So there's a lot of great lines going on. Um, my, my thought was to, to maybe strengthen some of the darks and like, is it possible to, um, like with with the coffee machine, like uh, I don't I don't know what the the percolator. <laughs> um, is it possible to like almost change the planes a little bit more severely, where we can see the paint break? You see what I mean? Um, so like they they almost feel a little bit too close, and this red could get, in my opinion, a little bit more red. Red more red. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. and 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 n not uniform because, I mean, if you if you take a look at that, um, look at how much the red changes from here to here. I mean, that's that's a drastic difference from here to here. 
it changes value, right? It goes. Uh -huh. like, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so as I look at your piece, I would, I'd be all over that. So I would go like, I, I just would maybe get smaller brushes out and I'd go, I'd go right here. I'd go lighter and then darker, but it still holds up as being uniform. But you see how much okay. more, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you okay. can almost you can almost put that paint on with a palette knife, like uh, mm -hmm. okay. that, that's really thick, heavy, rich, okay. saturated red. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Um, How do you and then this over here feels pink, um, but the thing I noticed when I saw the piece was that this color looks too close to the background, and it's kind of like the whole thing is kind of melting into the background. And so I would be tempted to go more pink right here than the orangey kind of color you currently have. So um, it's kind of hard for me to paint it in, but, and I'm, I, I'm definitely not getting <laughs> what I'm looking for, but uh, just kind of like popping it and then again, getting the, uh, the small brushes out. I think this has more character to the line mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. Um, let me go a little bit bigger and this line has a little bit more character and okay. really, really carve out that shape. Okay. Like let, let our eyes see a huge transition. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. And it, it might mean, cause I was thinking it looked a little too thin right here. Um, it might mean, uh, coming out just a little bit and going out a little okay. bit wider uh -huh, uh -huh. and then right here. Um, I, I like the color that you chose right here. That's cool. You like glazed like yellow on black. It's really cool. Um, and then it might mean just bringing in the side of the cup, just a smidge. Okay. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Just coming in just a smidge. Um, then again, like put the paint on so, so thick if you can with a palette knife even and let it just sit there. And then over on the handle, I would get like really black. You really want to pop off these these shapes and kind of strengthen the shape even a little bit more. Have it like be more assertive. Okay. Okay. And you see how that pops now? Okay. And then even over here, like let it just really pop. Okay. Um, so that it has like again like presence okay um and then jumping over to the bag maybe mm -hmm. is it possible to break up the form of the bag just a little bit um where like let's say you went in and kind of brought this over just like slightly because i feel like it may, maybe even if it curled like a little bit i don't know um, cause I feel like it kind of before, like, it just feels like a bit of a bland shape, but those bags can like sometimes even like curl on themselves. You know what I mean? Um, and I think the top is the easiest part to repaint, but you see how that oh, has okay. more character. Okay. And sure. Okay. I feel like the, the character of the piece right here now okay. kind of feels kooky and, and fun. So I like that. Okay, um, sure. mm -hmm. So then uh, last thing that I saw, mm -hmm. um, I, I like, I like like almost like a, a crisp aqua blue more than the, the color here. It feels like um, so close to the background. Okay. Um, is there, is there another color that you can think of that you put in right here? Like something seafoam to King's blue. Um, that is would the, agree. Uh, the the cool cool color is belong to this painting or yeah I, I think I think it could yeah because look look at the cool color in the bag um, okay I mean, look look okay. at that that's that's brilliant um, I like letting cold and hot colors okay. fight I like letting okay. them fight in a painting okay. and letting Nothing them against them I think it's a warm color I just put a warm color. It's, Okay, yeah. I try. I try the. If the I, I will go away, the light if go to too cold, the blue, the 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 
that I will go, that the leading line will go away, go out of the canvas? Yeah, it might. Um, so, the, like, be sure of one thing. I will definitely steer you in the wrong direction sometimes, and then afterwards say, whoops, sorry. But um, that's the way that I paint. Like okay, if I have, try. if I have the, if, if I have the thought, I go for it. So I like um, how that, look at the coffee bag, how I repainted mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. so I like that better. And okay. it kind of, it's like this cold and hot battle on the canvas now, to my eye. Um, mm -hmm. I like, I, somehow I feel like, somehow I feel like the painting just became hotter because I wrote in cold elements. Um, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I would, I'd really charge up the pigment on those too. I'd, I mean, I'd be using, um, like you can use King's Blue, touch it with like ochre, touch it mm -hmm. with Naples Yellow. Definitely don't touch it with cadmiums. Don't touch it with cadmium yellow. But um, go in and, and like really slather on the paint, like super thick so it's, this is a saturated piece like that's the charm of it um then the next thing i'd say is i get the wood grain all that wood grain in mm -hmm. um and just like putting it like right over the surface and letting your viewer know that this is wood you know what i mean okay. and that it's going like that so obviously i put that in really crudely um okay. for the time being i probably mm -hmm. would, i probably would leave out the um uh the steam just for mm -hmm. now um because you want to put that in um mm -hmm. in in such a faint 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 way that it's almost like the final two seconds of the until you cross the finish line of the piece and like i think um when you've strengthened the values and you've really enriched those blacks and different things like that then you're going to look at it and be like aha um I just need to go in with super, super medium rich uh, paint put on with a uh, sable brush or absolutely no medium, but just dragging a bristle brush with some light, you know, like almost like wispy, whitish, bluish steam coming off. Like you, you'll, you'll know when you see it, you know? Okay. All right. Okay. Sure. So that's pretty much it. Those are my thoughts. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, you you know. need to cross now. Okay, yeah, thank you, I and uh, I, I try again, again and make it better. I'll see you in two weeks. Yeah, Maybe I'll see help. you in two weeks, and uh, it's it's looking really great. I can't, Cindy, I promise you, if I if I ever think a painting's bad um, and I don't like it, I promise you I'll tell you, but like the painting you did of your daughter, like to do a, a portrait, that is so hard from a photograph. Like that's that's seriously impressive. That's really good. Okay, so thank like, you. Um, I, have, I hope I can. I, it takes time. I did practice, but I, I want to make a loose. But I need to build my foundation. Will be getting loose. I just yeah. try to make a color right now. It's I know how to make a color. Just yeah. For the it, book, every time I like I do the cooking, like a baking. <laughs> yeah. May mix a color like a baking. Okay, thank you very much. You need to go to your class. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Good. See you. See you two weeks. Mm -hmm. Thank I'll, you. I'll send you. Um, I'll send you the video. Oh, you know what I'm doing with the videos now? I'm not. Um, I'm not sending you a big file anymore. I'm uh, putting them up on YouTube, so that way your computer doesn't get crashed. With like, you know, uh, one of the one of the videos I I had to send over to a student was 400 um, megabytes. I mean, that's massive. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. So what I'm doing now is. It takes me a few more hours. You'll have it by this evening. Sure. But I upload it to YouTube. And then all you do is go click and you can watch the whole video forever. Okay, sure. So, a million Thank times you. better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Take care. Thank you. All right, thanks See you, Chris. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you. Bye.